Welcome to another segment of 30 Minutes with Jesus. I hope you had a lovely week. I did. So we are not going to waste much time. We are just going to get into it. So you may want to close your eyes at this point. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we worship and exalt your holy name. Father, we give you the praise. We give you the honor. We give you the adoration. We thank you for this opportunity to be gathered again in your presence. Father, we ask that you inhabit this premises. We ask that you come and dwell with us and direct everything that will be taught today. Let it be your words and not ours. Father, use me as your oracle. Speak through me. Touch the heart of your people. Let them not just be the hearers, but also the doers of your will in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, right now we saturate this whole atmosphere with the blood of Jesus. Anything that is not of you, Papa, let it be uprooted out of this vicinity by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Amen. Internal rock of ages, whatever we want to be an obstacle or a hindrance, to the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus today. Be therefore arrested by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. We come under the unction of the Holy Ghost. And we begin to decree and declare these things. And Because the Bible said, Thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be established. Therefore we decree and declare that no appearance of evil shall thrive around this vicinity. You are therefore consumed by the Holy Ghost fire. Father, we surrender to you and we ask, O oh Lord, that you take control. You take control of this vicinity. Take control of this teaching. Take control of everything, O oh Jehovah, to your glory and yours alone in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for your love, for your kindness, for your compassion. Right now, Holy Spirit, we ask that you speak through me. Comfort us on every side. Open our ears to listen and not just listen. Receive it and not just receive it. Do it to your glory. Believe it and do it to your glory and yours alone. In Jesus' victorious name, we have prayed. Amen. So, um, folks, we are going to, by God's grace, round up from this topic, dimension of God's love. We are finishing it today. We would have finished it last week, but uh, I was participating in the program of um Dona, in Donamis International that is the 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 ministers conference so I had to even from work I was watching it from work I watched the morning section when I come home I continue with the evening session so by the time we did the night vigil oh Jesus when I woke up in the morning to do this I couldn't I was wrecked like <laughs> but the wrecked in a good way I needed sleep though because I think we didn't sleep until 5 five thirty that morning so that was when I began sleeping so I couldn't go ahead with it so but here we are today God has a reason for everything and nothing is by chance so we give him the praise because I wanted to take all of what I have learned over that week, the course of the week. I want to take it all in before I come on board as well. So today we are continuing from where we stopped. Um, uh, the topic we have been dealing on is the dimensions of God's love. So um, from a layman perspective, what is love? Love is an intense feeling of deep affection. Love is also the most important in life. To love is to put your needs second to what or whom you love. Love is unconditional, patient, and always forgives, never keeps calls, and always perseveres. Love creates strength and courage. With love, there is always hope. Love always wins. What does the Bible have to say with regards to the phenomenon love? Love from that is from the Bible perspective of that 
is based on our topic, which is the dimensions of God's law. So he's taking our reading today, we'll be taking from Jeremiah 31 verse 3. Where it says, the Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, ye I have loved thee. He saying, ye I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I grown thee. Praise the Lord. So our objective is to understand what the love of God is and the types of dimensions of love, of, sorry, of God's love towards mankind and if so if there are dimensions then how do we remain in god's love how do we remain in his love so that we will not be cast away so um at the course of this teaching we have learned that um god is love and out of love that is why he gave his only begotten son to come down here and die for you and I. And that is the way God demonstrated his love for you and I. If you really want to know, that is his first step. First, you, he demonstrated his love by dying for you on the cross of Calvary. Oh, Holy Spirit, take control. So right now, um, we have looked at um, the dimensions. We looked about, at about uh, six dimensions for about almost a month now. The first was the, uh, uh, the area of creation where God created you and I to come here and show forth his praise. If anybody, if you can't understand anything we have been saying over these few weeks you should understand one purpose that you are here for you are here to show forth his praise and i pray that his praise will be seen in you so that why were we created because the one who was wired with music that is the proud one everybody knows him as satan stopped praising God out of pride and because he knows he was the most one of the most beautiful thing God created actually so it's kind of got into his head and he stopped praising so for this reason God made us a little bit lower than angels and then he made us here to show forth his praise so if his praise is not found in you, well, I don't know why you are here for. So we looked again at um, the flood of Noah, of how uh, God was using that, um, that flood to show us how much he loved us and how much he doesn't want us to be destroyed. So he came on board and because the world perverted itself, allowing the sons of god and those sons of god at the time were known as okay they were angels who were known as sons of god and they those that followed lucifer that is those that adhered to satan came down here and had intercourse with men and polluted the whole environment with uh, daughters of men and polluted the whole environment and it had grieved god that he made man so because of what has been found in men so god now said okay i will not destroy this people that is he won't destroy us rather there will be an inspection clean house and then the flood of noah happened and you should see it as a baptism as a consecration as a way of bringing us close to messiah you know so and then we looked at um, the, the conforming of the tongue at the Tower of Babel. It's actually a, a way of God showing us his love that um, that is true. That means by changing the language. That's why we have too many, so many languages today. 
and he came down and confirmed the tongue of men so that we will not self-destruct ourselves with the kind of device we are devising at the time. So um, that is the way of him showing us his love as well. Because, okay, fine, look at the way he, he came down and confirmed the tongue and see today what men have done. They've created nuclear weapons to nuke themselves. So it is only the God knows what the restrainer has been restraining for that intelligence not to be discovered. So all these are ways in which God has been showing us his love for us. And then we looked at the we looked at the 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 the, the rescue of children of Israel from 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 their slave master the Egyptians that is another way God was showing his love you know one was being liberated the other was being judged so um, that's another dimension of his love then we looked at the salvation package where Jesus Christ uh, where, where God declared war upon Satan in Genesis 3 and God, that was when it was foretold that uh, um, Christ was going to come and then uh, he came here and died for you and I and you and I are supposed to return that love by accepting what he did for us on the cross so that is the way God was showing his love another package was the end time package God was um, protecting those who are saved who have accepted Christ as their Lord and personal Savior he was protecting them from the destruction that is to come upon the earth. He, because the Bible says, if, if not for the sake of the elect, he will shorten those days so that you and I will not miss it. And today we are going to look at the last aspect, aspect of this dimension of God's love, which is the new world. I call it the new world. Meanwhile, the Bible says it's new Jerusalem. So where Jesus reigns as the president of the world and the president of heaven, you know. So that is another dimension of his love. So um, today we are going to be reading from Revelation 21. Revelation 21. I'm going to be reading from, King, from the King James Version. So I'm going to be very fast. Well, I hope so. And so, if you have your Bible, open your Bible to Revelation 21. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, verse 4. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Verse 6. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Be, oops, sorry, verse, um, verse 8. Um, but the fearful and unbelieving and abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers, idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And there shall there came unto me one of the seven angels which, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues. 
and talked with me saying, come hither, I will show thee the bride, the lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper uh, stone, clear as crystal, and had a wall great and high and had 12 gates and at the gate 12 angels and names written thereon which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel on the east three gates on the the north three gates on the south three gates and on the west three gates and the wall of the city had 12 foundation and in them the names of the 12 apostles of the lamb and he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city and the gates thereof and the wall thereof and the city lied four square and the land is as large as the breadth and he measured the city with the reed 12,000 furlongs the land and the breadth and the height of it are equal and he measured the wall of thereof an hundred and forty and four cubits and according in according to the measure of a man that is of the angel and the building of the wall of it was of, of jasper and the city was pure gold like unto clear glass and the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones the first foundation was jasper the second sapphire the third a cal a, a chalcedony the fourth an emerald uh, the fifth um sadox the sixth um sadius the seventh uh, crystal and uh, the eighth beryl the ninth uh, topaz the tenth uh, crepostros and uh, and the eleven the eleven a jacinet um the twelve amethyst well <laughs> amethyst okay and then um the twelve gates were twelve pearls every several gates was of one pearl and the street of the city was pure gold as it were transparent glass and i saw now no temple therein for the lord god almighty and the lamb at the temple of it wow and the city had had no need of sun neither of the moon to shine in it for the glory of god did light in it and the lamb is the light thereof wow and the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it and the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day you know the way you close your door before you go in yeah it will not be shut by day for there shall be no night there <laughs> wow and there shall they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it, and they shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth neither whatsoever walketh abomination. Praise the Lord, or make it a lie. Hallelujah. But they which are written in the Lamb's book of life, praise the Lord. So I have read from verse 1 to 27, and I'm going to give you a brief summary because of time um i'm going to talk about verse 1 to 11 by god's grace so we have seen um in this uh, verse i have sorry chapter of revelation that i have just read that is revelation 21 from 1 to 27 and as in old heaven passed away old earth passed away that is old heaven that is where god is right there now and then this earth as well is going that's why the bible's confirmed this statement i'm saying to you in matthew 24 35 that all things heaven and earth shall pass away but his word will never pass away so that is a confirmation of this heaven that's they're all in there, the first, the second, and the third heaven, all we go away. That's the first heaven where all these principalities 
are living in he will all pass away if the third heaven where god is going he will god will demolish it that's what he says here if the bible is correct that's what it means he said heaven and earth will pass away but my word will remain see the word of god the god himself which is the word is not going anywhere that's what he's telling you so everything you see both heaven and earth it will go but god cannot go anywhere wow matthew 24 35 confirms that statement and the sea we see shall be no more so john saw verse 2 now that is me describing verse 1 in verse 2 now john saw the new design jerusalem coming down from god that is coming down from the designer which is god we know how beautiful a bride is like on your wedding day how well you're decorated and and how beautiful you look and everybody will be like wow so that was that wow factor was what you know caught john's attention the wow factor and that's how brides look like that's why he kind of used the bride as a senior as um, as an example to that passage you know because brides on their wedding they have the wow factor so and and then so that is how the new designed jerusalem by the designer himself uh, is going to look like uh, you know and then in verse 3 behold behold actually means look or see this is the dwelling place of god on earth and it has been released to mankind on earth because he god will dwell in it <laughs> how amazing is that what else can you ask for that the creator himself said I am going to build another house where I will live with you guys. Me and you guys will live together. What kind, what, what gift, what gift does any man need in this life other than living with God in the same, under the same roof? You will know that devil cannot dare come near the gates. That if you can't understand how amazing it is, just understand that the devil will not near that gate. If you can't take anything home, just know that if the new Jerusalem as God will mold it by himself, will come down, the devil dares not near that gate. Mm -hmm. So that means there won't be barrenness, there won't be sickness, there won't be poverty, there won't be homosexuals running about being confused. You name it. All manner of barbarism, lie, abominable things. You won't find any near there. So, in verse 4, God will wipe away all tears from our eyes. You know, I when I was reading this, I was wondering, we are living with God. How come there are people who are still crying? Well, one thing only came in, uh, I felt only probably those who did not make it, you know, we were crying probably because, oh, this our friend that we have been preaching to did not make it. Maybe those are the tears that we were crying, you know, and God decided to, you know, wipe them away and made us to forget even if those things ever happened, you know, to us. So, um, verse 5 now made sense. He said, He who sat upon the throne said, Behold, that is look, I make things, all things new. That is it. That this confirms, Mark 16 19 confirms he who is sitting on the throne, which is the number of which is Jesus. Go and read Mark 16 in, in 19. It confirms it. Luke 22 69. It confirms it. <laughs> And then these words are true and faithful, you know. God can never lie. God does not lie. He what will he gain? He, he doesn't even know what lie is, you know. He doesn't that he does not associate with that kind of a thing. He doesn't know what it means to lie, you know. So our verse six, our God is a God who says what he means and does what he means. 
because he is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and end. So anyone who desires to have life and have it abundantly, he will give it to such a person, not by coercing with them or uh, forcing them. No, no, no. It's an individual's choice and you will not have to pay a dime for it. <laughs> so, number seven, I am rushing because I have five minutes left. The New Jerusalem is only for those who overcame. It's only for those who overcome that, that uh, whatever, the four elements. Those are the ones who will be candidates to live with God. That is, uh, who is God who is now the president of the whole world because now they, they don't want to do he now he is still the president of the whole universe but some people are not recognizing that but this time they will all recognize it praise the Lord hallelujah so I asked myself uh, uh, sorry um, yeah this new Jerusalem is only for those who overcame they will live with God who is now the president of this new world and they would be called sons of God. You and I will be called sons of God. So I ask myself, why does the Bible always refer to all sons, all of us as sons of God? Because I'm a woman now, you know, why would I be referred to as son? I realize that the spirit that comes to live inside of us is actually a man, <laughs> which is the Holy Spirit. That is whether you are a man or a woman, when you give your life to Jesus. The Holy Spirit, which is the Spirit of God, comes to dwell inside of you. So I said maybe that's why we all are always referred to as the sons of God, because of the Spirit we carry inside of us. So that is open for anybody to go and ask more revelation on this, okay? This is just what I got. So for all overcomers, they must endure four elements of end time package, which we discussed previously. After they have passed the test, there, there's no doubt that they wouldn't be overcomers and uh, inherit all things, as the Bible said in Revelation 21. So all those who fail, this is now verse 8, all those who fail to endure the four elements which every serious, authentic believer will pass through during their journey here on earth with Christ, will inherit the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. Then, after they died here on earth, they will also die again in the afterlife. That is the second death. Their pen this penalty also goes for those who did not repent, who are unbelievers. Let's say, example, atheist, agnostic, universalist, Buddhist, the people who practice Sikh religion, even the Islam. Islamists, if they don't accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and personal Savior, by the way, they will go to hell. Christians too, who pretend that they are born again and they are not, they will still go to hell if they are not genuinely. So, I want to remind us all, the Bible is for everybody. It's not just for Christians because the Bible says in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He did not say, for God so loved Christians and he gave his only begotten son. Or no, the Bible said, for God so loved the Jews and he gave his only begotten son. No, it says that the, the, it says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So, are you part of this world? Are you breathing? It, irrespective of your faith, whether it's Christianity, whether it's Islam, whether it's Buddhist, whether it's Sikh religion, whether it's a, a Hinduist, whatever you are, as long as you are a living creature on this earth, Jesus died for you. So, it is now your duty to recognize what he did find it it doesn't matter it's in the book of the christians go there it belongs to you too your name is written there look for it and make your way with christ that's what if jesus the, the bible says for god so loved the world in the world are you part of this earth then you you are among that he gave his only because that whosoever he did not say that only christian whosoever that is the only Christian who believe in him shall, you know, 
It doesn't say that. It says for whosoever, whether you are Sikh, whether you are, you are Buddhist, whether you are an Islamist, whether you are a, a fake Christian, whether you are a whatever, a Jehovah Witness, whatever you are, for if, if Jesus died for you. So you should recognize it and claim it and, and repent. So that is it. Verse 9. The church here is the lamb's bride, not Israel, by the way. Because Israel is the groom's mother. That is, the groom is Jesus and the bride is the church. So Israel is the mother. I'll put it that way. As, she, as Israel brought forth the child Messiah, so I call her uh, the mother. So the church is the lamb's wife. So the angel showed John who the lamb's wife is so that there won't be any confusion today. So church isn't a building. Church is you and I. So we as church are the lamb's wife. And, and who is the lamb? In John 1, 20, uh, 20, uh, 29, it says, The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold the lamb of God which taketh away the sins of the world. So verse 10, John was tied away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and was shown a great city. Now John was not sleeping. He was awake and he was conscious of his environment. His, his second eye was opened. That is his spiritual, his spirit man was brought forward in order to see what's coming in the future. So after this experience, experience, he will definitely remember all he saw. He saw because he was not dreaming. It was not deep. He wasn't dreaming. Because it happened when he was fully awake. So what did John see? He saw a great city and called it the Holy Jerusalem. How did he know that the city was Jerusalem? I believe that God gave King David the blueprint of how Solomon should build the city. And... Uh, and John remembered how the city was built and it resembles the one he saw and that, that made him to call it a new Jerusalem. First Chronicles 22 from verse 6 to 12 tells us who was calling the shots of who is to build the house of God, how it is to be built. The, this passage tells us that God is the one calling the shot. David had gathered everything he needs to build, but God did not allow him to build his house because David's hands are soil, were soiled with blood. So why didn't go, David go ahead to build the house? He couldn't because he wouldn't know how to go about it. So the Lord is the one with the blueprint. Also, remember that when the ark of God and the tabernacle was built in the times of Moses, God gave them instructions on how to build it. Here, God says to David, you can pay for it, but you won't build it, period. So this, uh, this today means that any pastor who has his hands dirty will not be recognized by God until he repents. It, is all, it also means if your hands are soiled with blood, there is much that God may not allow you to do for him. But look at Paul, the apostle who also had blood on his hands. Jesus used him more than most of the apostles. You may ask yourself, why did God allow that? Now that is a thought for you to go and think, why did God... For me, I would say from the understanding of the scripture and with the help of the Holy Spirit, Jesus had died and resurrected. That was why Paul was allowed to, to, to be greater or to be the greatest among the apostles, though his hands were sold with the martyrs of Jesus. So I think it was the blood of Jesus that was speaking. So that is why if you're a pastor or whoever you are out there and your hands are still dirty, come to Jesus today and let Jesus wash them clean, just like he did for Paul. Praise the Lord. So, um, so the new Jerusalem descending out of heaven from God, um, this, this time God did not speak into existence. It didn't, it, the new Jerusalem that was coming out from God, God didn't speak it into existence. What, according to the scriptures, what John saw, this, I think, 
not that I think when I was studying this, the Holy Spirit led me to believe. I was led to believe that God has built it with his hands. This is not, he didn't call it forth because what John saw was that it, it, the text didn't say that God call as in spoke it into being. No, it says that it came out of him. That means he had built it or molded it by him, his hands and kept it inside of him so that when the time comes he will release it so that was john's when he was releasing it in the future john saw it being released praise the lord hallelujah so um at the right hand yeah so the right hand was the after the whole end time package where we are going to live we that finally made it praise the lord so isn't that amazing that only a father can understand that a child needs shelter when you know when the the previous shelter has been destroyed that is when the heaven and earth has passed away only a father who is a loving father who sees ahead of time knows the need of his children so and God saw this and made provision ahead Praise the Lord. Father, thank you for loving us. So, um, verse 11, describe how beautiful the house God built by himself is. You cannot begin to compare it with any beautiful mansions built here on earth. If you go to Saudi Arabia, they have houses that they built with gold. Their cars are made with silver, caressed silver. Even the, tire, the wheels of the tire made with silver gold all those things you can't compare it with what god built <laughs> so um hans this house built with god's hands was not spoken into existence but the ones were living here now and the ones there were spoken into existence but this one that he sat down and built with his hand father thank you so he must have molded it with his hands and the, the Bible, if you read, this is where I'm stopping. If you go ahead, read, it will show you how the, the, the Bible describes how beautiful they are and what was used to build it. So go and read it for yourself. So anyway, God did love. God did all of this out of love for us. So I implore you to return his, this love to him for your own good, not for him. He doesn't perish, but you will perish. If you reject him or the love he's offering today, <laughs> what do you think will happen? You're the one that will lose, not him. So think about it. Who needs this love more? Is it you or is it God? You should think about it because eternity is not one day. It's forever. Praise the Lord. So, the next thing, oh Jesus, our time has gone. So the next thing we are going to look at is how do we um, remain in his love? I have made a, a list of eight of them. Have interest in the things of the Lord. Show interest in, in, in the one who created you. How can you not show interest in the one who made you? Because the last time I checked, you didn't bring yourself here. God made you. Look, there are verses for me to read here, but because of time, I'm just going to, um, what is it called? Read them out fast. Just dictate them out. Number two is listen. Listen. Anytime God talks to Israel, this is now Isaiah 46, 3 to 4. Anytime God wants to talk to his children, he always says, listen. He wants everywhere to be quiet before he, you know, he ministers. And that is how God operates, by the way. Then number three, have, so that the thing will enter your soul permanently. You see, the Bible says, once has God spoken and twice have I heard. So when God has spoken it, when you were hearing it, then the second time when his prophet is teaching it, that's the second time. So uh, have you, that's to confirm it in him what God has said so twice have I heard so have your mind stayed on him Isaiah 26 verse 3 go and read it have your mind stayed on God 
obey him. If you don't obey him, I don't think Jesus will be your friend. You only obey who you love. So if you don't love him, that's the reason for your disobedience. So go and read Proverbs uh, 620, John 14:23, and then five, show forth his praise. Always let his praise be found in you because that's the reason why you're here. Pray without season, number six. Uh, pray without season because, you see, prayer has five capacity of healing. Of, uh, sorry, has five capacity. I'm going to read them quickly. Prayer, that is praying, has five capacity. It has the capacity of healing. Peter in Acts 3, 6, go and read what he says there. It has the capacity of breaking the spirit of fear. This is now about Joseph when he was scared that Mary was pregnant. Go and read what happened in Matthew 120. It has the capacity of turning situations around. Read Job. When Job prayed for his friends, his captivity was turned around. Uh, four, it has the capacity of breakthrough, e.g. financial breakthrough, like Jabez in 1 Corinthians 4.10. Go and read it. Number five, it has the capacity of releasing fire, like Elijah in 1 Kings 18, 36 to 38. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And then seven, study his word. Study his word. Study his word. Five reasons, again, why you should uh, study his word. It testifies of him, that is of Jesus. It makes an individual noble. It makes an individual to know the maker and be able to lean on him or depend on him. It makes the individual prosperous and have good success. It produces, produces the blessing. So the Bible says in John 5, 39, Jesus says, search the scriptures for in them ye think ye have eternal life and they are they which testify of me. So I will skip now and go to number eight, what it says. It says here and preach the word. So I am going to stop here. The spirit has assured us, Let's preach the word, or I'll go back to that. Preach the word. Preach the word means go out there. Jesus in Romans 10 has already commanded us to go. So go out there. In Mark 16, 15, he has, to, it's, not a, it's not a request. It's a command to remain. If you want to re remain in God's love, to be an authentic child of God, then go out there and, and win souls for him. He will be very happy with you. So the Spirit has assured us that if we do these things, including loving our brothers as God has loved us, then it indicates that we are in him and him in us. In verse 13 of 1 John 4, it says, Hereby know ye that we dwell in him and he in us, because he had given us of his spirit. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So that is my counsel. The A and the ninth. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for remembering, because I didn't add it there. Live a sacrificial life. Um always sacrifice always sacrifice keep your altar running with sacrifice because when god when the enemy comes like a flood god looks at your sacrifice your altar and prevents any harm to come to you number 10 pay your tithes if you claim to know god then i don't think you have a problem paying it paying your tithe or you want to partake of the blessing you see if i had gone each uh, taking each and every um, item i dictated here now you would have understood what to do in details to remain in this love but you know the key thing to do so i am going to ask you now if you want to you're saying to yourself that i don't even know the maker not to talk of to do not talk of knowing the dimensions of his love or to even know what to do to remain in his love then say this prayer after me lord jesus i come before your throne of grace i recognize that i am a sinner please lord forgive me my sins cleanse me from every trace of unrighteousness use me today lord to preach the word of god to those who are yet to, to know you Baptize me with the Spirit of the Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit, please come and dwell in me. Come and direct my footsteps. Come and live my life for me. 
Thank you, Jesus, for making me your new child. In Jesus' precious name, amen. So if you have said that prayer, welcome to the family of Yeshua Amashir. And the Lord God will bless you. So um, look for a living, a Bible-living church to attend. Or you could connect online to Donamis International. Or you could also, there is a redeemed church here in Ireland. There are redeemed churches anywhere you are. You will find redeemed churches. So um, you will also find a living faith. You will also find... Um, these are Bible believing churches, okay, who will teach you what the Bible is saying. Um, winners, look for those churches, look for mountain on fire, wherever you are. So, um, if you can't, you can also go to Maranatha. Maranatha has lovely teachers there, and also you can connect with us here. Yeah. So today I will be posting, um, not today, tomorrow, I will be posting a question for the week. So endeavor to participate because whatever the servant of the Lord confirms, the Lord him, uh, does, the Lord himself uh, confirms it. So Lord, we just thank you for this opportunity. We give you the praise. We give you the honor and the adoration. Blessed be your holy name. Adoration to your name. Holy Spirit, take control in Jesus' precious name. Amen. I see you next week.